Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome once again to the Secrets of the High Demand Coach. And I am here with a fascinating and high demand coach, uh, working with somewhere around 10,000 different leaders now, if I remember correctly. But uh, this is the one, the only John Hewitt. Now, you may have heard that name before because he's best known in the tax preparation industry, having founded two of the largest tax prep companies in the United States, Jackson Hewitt and Liberty Tax. Now, in 1982, John Hewitt founded Jackson Hewitt, a tax prep company, and that company grew to over 6,000 locations nationwide at the top of its success. Now, he sold it to Sendent Corporation for over $480 million in 1997. And in 1998, he founded Liberty Tax, a major player in the tax prep industry as well, with at one time over 4,000 locations in the United States and Canada. In addition to his success in business, John is also a ph philanthropist who has dedicated his time and resources to helping others through fighting world hunger and other charitable endeavors. Today, he's the CEO of Loyalty Brands, which we're going to explore a little bit. He's also the author of a great book, I Compete, How My Extraordinary Strategy for Winning Can Be Yours. Well, John, welcome to the show. Uh, excited to have you here. Uh, I've got a lot of questions. I've seen Labor Lady Liberty uh, dancing uh, on a, a, an intersection or two. Uh, so we'll dive into that in a bit. But tell us a little bit, um, what was it about the tax, tax prep industry that, that, that drove you to it? First of all, I was very blessed at 20 years old to find out what I wanted to be the rest of my life. And I took a course at h and Block while I was in college. And it it just was perfect for me because number one it was helping people and improving their lives number two is it was legal and so you got to argue and there's always gray areas in legality and and with the irs and the tax code and then finally with my math skills back uh, you can't remember come close to remembering the work without computers but not only did we not have computers, we didn't even have calculators. We started out with an and machine, pulling the hand off an and machine. So my my math, one of my blessings is my math skills, and it came in came in extremely handy in preparing tax returns quickly. Yeah, that's fascinating. So. Um... What was, you know, because a lot there's a lot of tax prep businesses out there, right? Uh, there's a lot of CPAs and, and accountants, and there's a lot of folks who do it. What do you think separated your approach that created such enormous success, not once, but twice? Well, first of all, to succeed, you have to have differentiators. You know, if David had gone down to the field with the same sword and the same armor and the same shield as Goliath, there would be no David and Goliath story. So he'd be the 189th guy killed by Goliath. So you have to have things that you do better. And what what I all of my companies I've improved on the standards of the industry. So we have differentiators that make us a little bit better. I'll give you an example of one of them. Uh, we have about 15 or 20 things we do better than than all of our national competitors. Now that I've started Ajax, and what is that? In the tax season, most people think of it as, as 15 weeks from January 1st to April 15th, but really we do most of our business in just four busy weeks. And so what we do, uh, unlike our competitors, I love driving by an h and Block office at quarter to nine in the morning and there's customers standing outside, the door's locked, and there's tax preparers sitting in playing on the computer because they're like a bank. They don't open until nine o'clock. And then at five after nine, there's a knock on the door and they don't even get out of their chair. They just wave them away, come back tomorrow because they locked the door at nine o'clock. Well, we just simply during those four busy weeks, expand our hours. So we're more convenient. We're, we offer a better service to our customers. And uh, so the, that's just one of the, the 15 clear objective differentiators that set us apart. You don't have to do everything better, but you do have to have, you do have to have a few things that you're extraordinary at, not ordinary. And and how did you uh, how did you go about doing that? So one of the things again that I I, I kind of where I heard about you guys um, not the first but the most frequently was your advert one of your advertising strategies for Liberty Tax. 
uh, which if I remember correctly was, uh, you know, you'd have Statue of Liberty kind of outside of one of the, how did you come up with that? How did you use that as a way of attracting people into the, your stores? Well, I read a book um, just before I left Jackson Hewitt back in 1996 uh, called Guerrilla Marketing. And he talks about uh, standing up. And for example, in Virginia Beach, there's 550,000 people. There's over 40,000 businesses. And so if you have an office of any kind in Virginia Beach, you're competing against 40,000 other businesses that are trying to get your attention. And so you, you can't do the same thing as everyone else. If everyone else is on TV or radio or billboards or direct mail or yellow page, you have to do something unique. And I didn't invent, I didn't invent costume characters. Back in the 50s and 60s, there was a Ronald McDonald. There was a little Wendy's with a, a wig, red-haired wig. There was a Burger King with a big head Burger King. There was uh, Chick-fil-A as a cow. So I didn't invent it. But I've asked, I've asked this question to thousands of people. So how many businesses do you pass on the way to work each day? Typically, they'll say hundreds. I said, how many can you name? And they say 20. And I say, well, if you saw a costume character, a Lady Liberty, or in our case, an Ajax and the Eagle, if you saw a costume character waving at you what, in traffic every day from January through April, would that be one of the businesses that come to mind? So it doesn't matter how many messages you're bombarded with on TV or radio or, or on the internet. If you see that costume character, it stands out more than anything. And we tried it and it works. So you've done this a few times now. Uh, and so how is it different uh, from the first time to the second time? And how is it different from the second to the third? What did you do differently? Uh, and how did you show up differently? Well, when we sold Jackson Hewitt for $483 million, a public company, I had been there 15 years. And if you build something from zero, a $129,000 investment to $483 million in 15 years, and, and again, they grew to 6,000 offices. If, if you grow to that size and you don't hit, didn't learn a zillion lessons, you're an idiot. So I was a lot smarter and more experienced. And plus, so I had the advantage of, of 15 years of experience of already doing it once. And my name was famous in the industry, right? And, and maybe not in the whole United States, but in the tax preparation industry, there's only two names, Block and Hewitt. There's only two guys that have founded national tax chains that I've done it twice. And as you pointed out, I've built 10,000 offices and Henry Block only built 9,000 offices. So my name was famous. My So I was attracted. Uh, attractive to everyone in the industry who's interested in hearing me. And I was much more experienced. And uh, the, so the path was much easier the second time than, than the first time. Now, what, when I went to Liberty Tax, now there was a nuisance because now I had to compete not only with HR Block, but it can be with my own name and my own system and my own people and my own software. So yet in those in the first 12 years, we grew to 4,000 offices, uh, the fastest, one of the top 10 fastest growing franchisors ever. So again, because of my, my uh, um, experience. So um, I, I had experience at Blanc, I had experience that I took that to Jackson Newitt, that I took those two combined 27 years experience, went to Liberty, and now I've started again with ATEX. And each time I've had the best system and the fastest growing organization than uh, th my entire career. Wow. Wow, it's fascinating. So fra franchises may play a big part in this uh, and, and really cracking the code for the franchise strategy. Now, you do a, a, a lot of work with your company, uh, loyalty brands as well. So tell us a little bit about uh, what work you're doing there and, um, and how you help other entrepreneurs to succeed. Well, I've, uh, I have six loyalty brands that have six different franchisors that, and the, the two fastest growing 
our ATAX, which is a direct competitor with Jackson Hewitt and Liberty, and Zoom and Grimm. Zoom and Grimm is growing fast as well. I, I've just grown to love the, the pet industry. Zoom and Grimm is a mobile grooming pet service. And I just love pets. It, it grows by 10 to 12% a year. Everything pet, whether it's food or picking up poop or dog walking or pet sitting or delivery of food, euthanasia. I mean, everything is growing exponentially. And so I just love the pet industry. And uh, those two are my, my fastest growing franchisors. But we're in the franchise business. And we have, as I said, we have six different franchises that we're looking to build in cross market. Our, our largest grooming, mobile grooming has 5,000 customers. Well, 5,000 of them need a tax return. Our largest um, grooming, or our largest tax office has 7,000 customers. Well, 4,900 of them have pets that need, and most of those need grooming. So where one of the things we do well is cross market between the different franchise systems. Well, wow. you've done this for a while. You've worked with lots of franchisees. Uh, what are some of the key traits for an entrepreneur who you have found is likely to succeed as a franchisee? Well, so, well, there's two standards, right? There, are, The first standard is, should you be self-employed? And then the next standard is, once you should be self-employed, how do you succeed? So I brought in 5,200 franchisees in my career. About a, about a quarter of them should never be self-employed because they either didn't have the risk tolerance or the startup startup and the um, initiative. No one's there to tell you what to do when you're you're self-employed. No one says you got to be there at eight o'clock in the morning right. and you got to stay until six o'clock at night. So mo so many people need bosses. Two, what I found is two thirds of the people in the United States need they want to be self-employed, but only about half of them can be self-employed because they just don't have they they just don't have what it takes to be that that independent without guidance without the security that comes with the job. Right. So first, once okay, now I, they pass the test. They should be an entrepreneur. Now in in a franchise system, the the key is very very simple. Doesn't matter how smart you are doesn't matter how experienced you are, doesn't matter how educated you are. What my job is to give you the best system in the industry. I've been doing that for 54 years. If I do my job, your job is to follow that system. And Scott, you would think that's automatic, that's simple. I mean, think of yourself, you weren't even thought of when I started in this industry. And yet out of the 5,200 people I brought in, not one person's listened 100%. The best listen, 98 or 99 percent, and but typically, or or in the worst, I've had a uh, thousand become millionaires, and a thousand have gone out of business. The thousand that are millionaires, they listen 98 or 99 percent. No one's ever listened to hundred. And wow. the people that go out of business, they listen less. They listen less than 90 percent. And if you don't listen. I promise you it's going to cost you time or money or both. Wow. Wow. So uh, fast forward a little bit then. You've got a book now, uh, I Compete. Uh, so tell us a little bit about why you wrote the book and what you hope folks would get out of reading it. I decided a long time ago that that to whom, I mean, in this, this comes from the scripture, right? That too much is given, much is expected. And God didn't give me all the blessings that I've got to just sit around and, and go on a beach somewhere and, and just relax and retire. So they got to kill me to stop me. But I decided that, that my goal is my, what I'm, my purpose is, is to improve lives. And our mission statement says it all. And in four words, having fun, improving lives. I believe that on Monday morning, if you're going to work and not looking forward to it, you're going to the wrong place. It's not thank God it's Friday. It's thank God it's Monday. And we're here to improve lives of our shareholders, our employees, our customers, our vendors, and the world around us. So I'm what my goal is to improve lives. And so I wrote the book with some of the 
lessons, one of the, the biggest compliments I've gotten in my book over the years is that I talk a lot about my mistakes. I don't just talk about what went right. I talk about I, I talk about the obstacles we had to overcome, which which some of the obstacles or many of the obstacles were of my own doing. Wow. So there's a question I like to ask all of my guests, uh, and it's this: What would you say is the biggest secret uh, to to life, to business success, to whatever it may be? What is the biggest secret that you wish wasn't a secret at all? What's that one thing that you wish everyone listening to or watching this podcast knew? Well, my mantra is find something you love, work hard, persevere. That's it's that simple. Now, if and if there's a secret um, better than that, it's do what you say you're going to do. If, if, you know, I read sometime and I believe this via if you always do what you say you're going to do, you're going to be successful. So just do what you say. And that's to me, that's integrity. Integrity is. To me, honesty is about the past, and integrity is about the future. If I say that I'm going to call you next Tuesday, that's integrity, and I that's integrity, whether I I really am fanatically committed to that or not. Wow, I love that distinction. Um, so there's some folks listening. Uh, maybe they've been thinking about jumping into the entrepreneurial world, and and you've challenged them, and and they're saying, yeah, I think I've got the initiative, I've got the resilience, I want to give it a shot. But they don't want to do it alone. They, they love the idea of stepping into a franchise environment or, or working with someone who, who can give them the advice that they need. Uh, they're ready to listen. How can they find out more about you and, and the work that you guys are doing there? I'm easy to find. Uh, you can Wikipedia me or uh, personally, or I'm on uh, uh, loyaltybrands.com. So, in, yeah. and if anyone's got, if anyone's interested in a free copy of my book, if you just send it to uh, email to me at John, J O H N, at loyaltybrands.com. Happy to send you a free copy of my book. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for that, John. We'll get that uh, email address in the show notes for folks to absolutely take him up on it. Uh, just this brief uh, introduction I had to the book was phenomenal. You will not regret it. John, thank you so much. I mean, just thank you for the time that you've given us today, the wisdom. The, this is one of those episodes that what you shared was so deep and so succinct that folks have to go and listen to it again because they missed about half of it the first time. Uh, so, uh, well done. I really appreciate that. For those of you watching or listening, genuinely go back and listen to it again. You're going to hear so many new things that you missed. And thank you for being here. Your time and attention mean the world to us. I hope you got as much out of this conversation as I know I did. And I cannot wait to see you next time. Take care. 